Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm really happy for you to get to know Sanjana Sathya. And we've practiced her name, and hopefully I got it right there, <laughs> Sanjana, from Thryzer. So as I start with everyone, Sanjana, tell everyone a little bit more about yourself and how you've landed where you've landed. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, you know, have always been a huge advocate for mental health. So it's kind of really my personal journey that led me here. You know, in the past before Thryzer, I've been a part of other healthcare and tech companies, and it kind of felt like the right, you know, professional marrying of the two. But really, my personal experience has been that, you know, I've I've been an anxious person as as long as I can remember. Like, it's just who I am. It's been who I am. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I went to therapy for the first time myself and got diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. So that's where I was like, oh, so there there's this thing, right? And there's there's something that I have to navigate through. It's not something I can just shun and push away. It's really a part of who I am. And that's where my journey with therapy began. And so I, you know, went to consistent therapy, still go to therapy and really saw the value of that. But at the same time, I was seeing an out-of-network provider who, you know, would issue super bills and I would try to submit them, get the reimbursement and and failed. And I never heard back from insurances, mm-hmm. kind of went into this black box. And it was it was tough to be able to to sustain therapy because I wanted to continue with her, but financially it became a burden. That's kind of around the time that I heard about Thryzer as well. So I actually used Thryzer as a client first. You know, my co-founder, Ronak, is the one who founded it back in 2022. He had a very similar story to me of going to mm-hmm. therapy for a long time and navigating super bills. And he just kind of got fed up and was like, if I'm dealing with this and everyone else is, right? And I was like, yes, well, for sure I'm dealing with it. And so that's really what brought me to Thryzer. And it's, you know, I've been here for about a year now and it's just been the best experience. And it's, yeah, it's definitely something that I, I care a lot about. Therapy has been so impactful in my own life. And I would love for everyone who wants to access it to be able to without finances being the reason that they can't. Right, right. Yeah, I, I love that story. And I think what you what you speak to is, you know, having having been in practice myself for, oh, gosh, nearly 18 years now, one of the things that we do run into is people that are, you know, wanting to use insurance, which we all, most of us all that have our health insurance, we want to be able to use it, particularly for therapy and mental health issues, but not it's not always possible for the therapist to be able to be in network. And so, and this is something I talk about in our, in my mastermind groups, just about using super bills as a way to allow people to pay you directly, but then giving them a super bill to possibly get reimbursed by their insurance company. And so, yeah, I love the, I love this concept and, and you're right. I think a lot of people run into problems with that. So feed us your knowledge <laughs> Yeah, about absolutely. all of this. Yes. Yeah. It's, you know, I think as I've joined Thryzer, I have really gotten to have so many conversations with therapists to learn about their experience. And you're absolutely right. Like being in network when insurance doesn't support you, whether that's, you know, all the admin work, whether that's the low reimbursement rates, there is just clawbacks and audits. And there's just so many things that just make it impossible, honestly, for for a therapist to stay in network for the course of their career. At some point, people will consider going out of network. At the Mm -hmm. same time, if we're trying to say, hey, we want to keep mental health and therapy be accessible, we really have to lean on things like out-of-network benefits. And it's honestly a pretty reliable, you know, mode of financial help if we're able to figure out a system that works. And super bills, you know, I, I get this question a lot. It's like, I provide my clients with super bills. Like, why why do we need Thryzer, right? And and the reason is that super bill, like, first of all, clients don't want to deal with insurance, right? If If they're already seeking care and they're, you know, 
taking time out of their or their days to be able to say, hey, I want to be there with my therapist. I want to focus on my growth. It can feel really intimidating and scary, honestly, to say, hey, now I have to request a super bill. I have to figure out where to put it in the insurance portal. You don't get a confirmation email when you submit a super bill, right? So it's not like, hey, we received mm -hmm. it and we're working on it. There's no way to track your claim online, right? And if you're trying to get on a call with insurance, you know, you're going to be put on hold. You might find someone who'll tell you your claim status, but they really won't. First of all, you won't even know, like, how much am I going to get back in reimbursement? Because that's very much a coveted, you know, black box. And finally, after maybe the claim gets approved, you have to wait four to six weeks for that check in the mail, right? And then you have to mm -hmm. make sure the check doesn't get lost. And then you have to deposit it. It's just can feel really overwhelming and complicated. And I feel like even if a therapist provides a super bill, a client might say, hey, insurance is not going to have my back. I'm not even going to submit a super bill, right? Because it can just feel like this long process. And down the line, when, you know, even in the beginning, if they're able to afford the therapist rate, maybe down the line, you know, six months, 12 months in, you're like, hey, actually, now I feel like the financial burden is catching up. And I want to stop therapy. And I think my big hunch is people stop therapy because they can't afford it. I don't think it's because they're not getting value out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's where, you know, Thryzer comes in to really try to help all of this. And, and at every point, kind of, I pointed out the journey for a client. There's a friction point every, every way, every point of the way. So that's what mm -hmm. we'd really try to address to make it you know, super easy for them and also have it be a tool for clinicians to be able to say, hey, I'll help you navigate it for you because I have Thryzer and they'll take care of everything for you. All I really have to do is show up to sessions and that's it. So mm -hmm. that's pretty much, you know, kind of our mission to make everything super seamless. Yeah, that's I love that concept. And I think it's it's also if you if if we think about it by providing that through Thryzer we're providing our clients a very valuable service and that they're not having to do the legwork of trying to contact their insurance company about submitting the super bill and then not knowing what what's going to happen with, with yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious on the, on the therapist side of things and how does it generally work if we want to provide super bills to people and, What's the process, at least through Thryzer? Yeah, yeah. So typically, a therapist is able to provide a super bill from their EHR, right? There's a lot of EHRs these days have this feature where they're able to just easily export a super bill. And at that point, you know, the, the client would need to submit it to insurance. So what we found is that there's kind of two ways that a therapist typically likes to help their clients. One is a little bit more high touch and a lot of other one is like, hey, I want to be hands off, but I do want to provide a resource to my clients, right? So mm -hmm. the first one is our payment platform. And so if they want to provide courtesy Superbill uploads for their you know, clients, that's the right option for them. And then we also actually let clients just pay a copay in that world. So to break it down further... Essentially, a therapist would use Thryzer's payment platform to charge their clients after sessions. The benefit of doing so is that an out-of-network claim is automatically submitted to insurance as soon as they charge a client. So there's no need to provide their client with a super bill and have them submit it. We manage the claims end to end. So, you know, if, you know, insurance is like, hey, we need more follow-ups from you, we'll be on the phone with them, not the client or the or their clinician. And the other neat thing is that we actually let a client just pay a copay for their sessions while we cover the rest of the therapist's fee and then wait for reimbursement on the client's behalf. So wow. that's really a way that we're different from a lot of the other people who are trying to, you know, expedite and make the claim submission and management process easier because our hunch was that even hearing, hey, you have out-of-network benefits, but you have to wait four to six weeks for that check in the mail isn't enough, right? And and right. that's kind of what we heard from people, right? That doesn't really mm -hmm. help them access therapy today. And the reason a lot of clients would even see an in-network provider is because they just get to pay a copay. And so if we're able to kind of simulate and create that in-network experience for them while clinicians still get their full rate upfront, that's kind of like a win-win for both situations, right? right? And so that's how that payment platform world works. Yeah, that's that's great. I love I love the concept, and you know, one of the things. And this I can say 
this from just my own experience, and I'm curious as to how things like this would be, ha be handled, particularly for therapists. I know I can think of an example where we had a clinician that was out of network with a particular insurance company. We gave the client a super bill. They paid for their session up front. We gave them the super bill. They sent it into their insurance company. And then the insurance company contacted us, the therapists, wanting all their credentialing stuff. Mm. So, yeah. So how does that usually work with that sort of thing? So it was almost like they were trying to force us to go through the credentialing process with that insurance company okay. when we just wanted to mm -hmm. remain, you know, out of network. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a bizarre experience. Typically uh -huh. when we're able to say, Hey, a clinician wants to be out of network. It should be as simple as here's the super bill. I've made sure to put the client's diagnosis code. I've made sure to put a CPT code here, are the sessions that we've had, and here's how much I've charged. And here's my NPI and practice information. That mm -hmm. is enough for an out of network claim. At that point, you submit it to insurance and they shouldn't ask any questions. To be fair, though, insurance can be finicky and honestly shady at times, right? So what mm -hmm. we've seen recently is a lot of insurance companies asking for documentation, asking for notes and stuff like that, which typically just doesn't happen. And mm -hmm. honestly, our hunch is that it is just their way of delaying and denying claims. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, if we see this happening as a trend and as kind of like bulk claims asking for this, that's when we really go to bat for both the clinician and the client to figure out what's happening. And we get on, on the phone with insurance and we're like, why are you asking for this? What do you need from us? So that can at least be something that the clinician, the client doesn't need to handle. We're, we're handling it for them. But it rarely happens that we need to enroll a provider to be an out-of-network, you know, uh, clinician. Um, typically, we're able to submit the super bills and not have too much of a hassle in in getting that approved. Yeah, yeah. Is that uh, do you also run into maybe uh, insurance companies trying to renegotiate the rate? Yeah. So we actually don't influence the rates at all. Right. So we're not mm -hmm. involved in basically saying, Hey, like, you know, we, we would love to do that. I would love to say, Hey, like, let's make sure that, you know, out of network rates are fair and, you know, actually a good, a good amount of money that clients are getting back. But unfortunately we don't have that kind of influence. We really just submit the claim. And so mm -hmm. in the out of network setting, there's, there's not much that we can do to really influence the rates that, you know, people right. are reimbursed. Right. Right. Yeah. So what, what sort of, and this might be a hard question to answer. I don't know what sort of percentage of people are getting reimbursed for their, for their sessions and that sort of thing. Yeah. So the percentage is actually very high. It is, you know, we, the first question we get is how many, what percentage of people end up having out of network benefits, right? So just from the people who reach out to us or clinicians who come to us with their clients, about 70% of them end up having out-of-network benefits. And that might be a skewed number because, you know, it ne doesn't necessarily then mean that 70% of the United States has out-of-network benefits, right? So we try mm -hmm. to educate on that. But if a client has a PPO plan, you know, they typically and usually will have the out-of-network benefits. There are only a mm -hmm. few plans that don't have out-of-network benefits, like HMO plans don't have it, Medicare and Medicaid don't have it. But we always recommend that if you don't know if you have out-of-network benefits, just check, just make sure to see mm -hmm. if you have it. From right. there, once we've able we've been able to verify that a client has an has out-of-network benefits, it's pretty smooth sailing from there. So the denial rate is pretty low. I would say it's less than like about 5% or even less, like 2 to 3%. And at that point, it's usually just because there's like a small fix that we can make with the claim, resubmit it, and it kind of goes through after that. It's, you know, it's only when there's just like at large scale that a provider or clinician or, you know, insurance company is like, oh, like we're going to deny claims. And then at that point, we kind of need to figure out what's happening. But that rarely happens in the situations that we've seen. Right, right. Yeah. So with, with I'm, I'm sure you've got also ways, maybe scripts, that kind of thing of being able to explain to clients how all of this works. Yeah, yeah, we do. It is, it, we actually have like a 
a lot of just education on out-of-network benefits because Mm -hmm. we understand that it can feel new and complicated both for clinicians and clients. So we provide like, hey, here's how how out-of-network benefits works. And like even for clinicians who want to use Thryzer, there's scripts of how to explain Thryzer to your clients, right? And so the way that we typically like to explain it to clients because, you know, a lot of people don't understand how insurance works is basically you have an insurance plan. If you see a clinician who is in network with you or, you know, accepts your insurance, you will be using your in-network benefits. But just because you're seeing a, a therapist in this case who doesn't accept your insurance doesn't mean that you can't ask for reimbursement. And that's where the out-of-network benefits comes in. So you still mm-hmm. have these benefits in your plan that Even if you see a clinician outside of your network, you will be eligible to receive some relief from insurance. That, though, is a little bit more intensive on you to handle by yourself, right? That's where Mm -hmm. instead of, you know, if you were seeing a therapist who's in network, they will take care of the insurance claim for you. They'll submit it to insurance. You don't have to worry about anything. You just pay a copay Mm -hmm. here. You have to ask for a super bill. You have to submit it to insurance yourself and you have to wait for a check. And so that's how we explain it. And at that point, clients are like, okay, I'm, I, I don't want to do all that. And then that's yeah. where we educate them on, hey, but here's where Thryzer can help you. Right, right. You had mentioned about the copay. How does that work? Yeah. Or- so the way that out of network reimbursements work is basically insurance companies set this thing called an allowed amount. So an allowed amount is a very niche, like out of network reimbursement term. And what that means is that is the maximum they're willing to reimburse for a particular session. This allowed Mm -hmm. amount changes by client. It changes by even clinician licensures and geographies and everything. So that's that coveted number that we often, you know, we we don't get that before we submit a claim. We kind of have to wait for Mm -hmm. it after we submit a claim, but we're able to kind of estimate at it. But that allowed amount, is a flat number. So it's not a percentage-based thing. It's like, even if a clinician charges $200 or $400 for a session, insurance can say, hey, but we're only going to cover up to $150, right? Mm -hmm. And then whatever the, you know, reimbursement amount isn't covered, the difference between the clinician's rate and the reimbursement amount is what the client will end up owing. So Mm -hmm. let's say that allowed amount is $150, the clinician charges $200, the copay in that case would be $50. Or if the yeah. clinician charges $400, the allowed amount is still $150. They would pay $250 in that case, right? So it's really just a difference between the two. And it gets even more complicated because, you know, a lot of times a client will have this thing called a coinsurance responsibility. So even if the insurance sets an allowed amount at $150, they might say, oh, but you're responsible for 20% of that 150, right? Mm -hmm. We're only going to cover 80% of that 150. So in that case, they Mm -hmm. only cover 120. The client's still responsible for 30. And there's still that 50. That's the difference between the 200 and 150. So the client is actually paying $80, right? Right. And so the math can get a little confusing, but that's why we have an instant benefits calculator that does all of this for, for the client and the clinician so that they don't have to sit there and figure all this out. And that's kind of the number that we present to them. We'll say, hey, you have a deductible. After you meet your deductible, your copay is estimated at $80. And that's where we do all the math for them. Right, right. Yeah, so it's uh, in using the platform, it's really, at least the way you're describing it, it's almost like no different than using like in-network insurance. I mean, mm-hmm. you pay, yeah. pay the copay, the co-insurance, and then everything else is just handled on the back end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, Sanjana, I need to uh, be um, mindful of your time. Tell folks more about how they can find out about Thryzer. And also, I think you said that there's a free trial that you guys are offering as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we are offering a free trial for listeners of this podcast. So as a clinician, if you want to try out our payment platform, you can do so completely for free. We're letting you, uh, you know, try us out for no credit card fees for the first 2,500 in payments that you do. So that's a great 
kind of way to get your feet wet if you want to try out with one or two clients, see how the process works, check out our instant benefits calculator. It's kind of a great way to to do that. And I, I know I've dropped a link for with that with you, Gordon. So if you're able to share that with this podcast, but yes. if not, you can also go to thriser.com and make sure you enter Gordon as your free trial code. So you'll be able to get that credit then. Right, right. Well, that's so kind of you to offer that. And we'll have links in the show notes and the show summary uh, for people to find that easily. So any any parting thoughts here as we kind of wrap things up? Yeah. Um, thank you so much for having me. I think this was, uh, you know, it's always a, I feel a sense of responsibility to share how out-of-network benefits work because there's just so much. Mm-hmm just mystery around it. Right. And so I love these podcasts because we're able to actually break it down, do the math for people and, and walk them through it. And, and I forgot to mention the other service that we have. So if you did want to stay hands off, and we were talking about that a bit earlier, we also have a super bill uploads option for you. So in that case, as a clinician, you stay completely hands off. You can just give a client a super bill they can create their own Thryzer profile, verify their own benefits and upload their super bills onto that. So that way you're completely hands off. So you don't have to build through Thryzer. In that case too, we actually offer an instant reimbursement. So if they did want to say, hey, like I don't want to wait four weeks for that check in the mail. I just want it right now. They can actually request it for an extra fee. And at that point, they get the reimbursement directly to their bank account in one to two days instead of waiting mm. for that four to six weeks. So that's also an option awesome. available to you. So whatever, you know, makes more sense for your practice, you have that flexibility to choose. All right. Right. Yeah, that's great. And again, we'll have links in the show notes and the show summary. And well, I'm so excited about this and I'm hopefully we'll have some more conversations here in the future. 